Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and welcome to What The Math. In one of the previous videos using Universe Sandbox 2, I tried to recreate a theory that Planet 9 was captured from the outside, from another star that passed by our solar system and the Planet 9 somehow was captured uh, using this unusual maneuver. Now I, I tried something like 38 times and I failed every single time. One of you actually messaged me, and I believe this was a person by the name of Lyndon Marquez, and he said that if you actually launch a star a little bit slower, it does seem to work. But today I'm going to discover or actually experiment with something else. And what is it? You're about to find out. Welcome to What the Math. <laughs> And so what Lyndon uh, messaged me about is that if you launch a star relatively close to our sun at a speed of about 3 kilometers per second, basically relatively slow and also at a distance of about 30 to 50 astronomical units, and then you place a few planets around it, and here we have our Proxima Centauri again with a few Gliese 876Ds flying around it or orbiting around it. Um, you will at some point have at least one of these planets uh, captured in a relatively eccentric orbit around our Sun. And here the orbit can be anywhere between 100 to possibly several hundred astronomical units. Um, and this does seem to work if you do this a few times, you will actually have at least one of them. So you can kind of see them escaping right now. At least one of them. There's one actually and possibly even more. And there's a lot of madness going on inside our solar system right now. But uh, we actually have some Gliese uh, planets living at a very, very fast velocity of 30 kilometers per second. But uh, I think at least one of them is actually inside right now. There's, there's, there it is, actually. Um, so this has been captured and is now currently part of the solar system. So, yeah, that definitely works. It will not, however, work if you launch it at a farther distance away. As a matter of fact, the more realistic distance would be about 600 astronomical units. And if you do this again, and if you launch a similar solar system um, at a distance of about 600 astronomical units, unfortunately, uh, the sun's pool will not be enough to change anything. And I'm going to show it to you in a second. But here we actually have at least one of the planets captured. And uh, thanks for recommending this, Lyndon. It's actually definitely a cool way of doing this. But here is a more realistic way. So for uh, Planet 9 to be where it currently is, a star would have to actually pass around here. 600-ish astronomical units, and this is where it would have to be captured. Now, let's try this again using a very similar sort of technique. So we're going to launch a star at a velocity of about 3 kilometers per second, or actually, let's even lower that. Let's lower this to about 1 kilometer per second. We're going to launch it this way and attach a lot of Gliese uh, planets uh, orbiting around it at different sort of orbits just so we can uh, uh, possibly capture at least one up to a distance of about 30 astronomical units which is a distance of uh, Neptune from the Sun so here we go here's our new system uh, one of these will represent one of these will present planet 9 and uh, what we're going to try to simulate here is a more realistic um, star passage if it actually came into our solar system, passed by the solar system at a distance where we think uh, Planet 9 is. And if at least one of these uh, planets is actually able to kind of escape and become part of our, our solar system and become um, basically start orbiting the sun, we can kind of conclude that, yeah, this is possibly how it happened. And here, for uh, one of these planets to actually become part of uh, our solar system, the Sun's gravitational pull has to be stronger than the gravitational pull of Proxima Centauri, um, which already actually is very, very small compared to our Sun. As a matter of fact, its mass compared to our Sun is only about 12%. So let's see if anything happens after a few years here. And I have a strong feeling that nothing will happen. You can kind of see it's going to pass by at a distance of about... Um, I think this is about 500 astronomical units, which is quite realistic in terms of where we think Planet 9 is, but let's see if any of these orbits actually change. And I'm actually going to be looking at eccentricity of the farthest Gliese 876D. Um, so currently it's at 2%, uh, and let's see if it gets even larger than that, or if it actually escapes the system. And I think that we're actually currently at the closest approach to the Sun. You can kind of see Sedna orbiting and wiggling right there, and uh, other dwarf planets orbiting around our Sun. And eccentricity actually seems to have dropped, it didn't even increase. So unfortunately, 
even at a very very low speed um it's very unlikely that um a planet would be captured from a star that passes by close to our sun and as you can see nothing really changes in terms of orbits of this particular star but sedna may actually have changed its orbit a little bit because proxima centauri might actually influence its orbit so that's experiment number one but actually in this particular video i actually wanted to talk about um stars that passed through our system in general as a matter of fact i wanted to discuss a very cool star by the name of show star also known as wise 0720 0846 now this particular star is located about 20 to 25 light years away from our sun and i'm going to show it to you right here so there is the show star and there is our sun now the interesting thing about this particular star is that we found out that it, it actually doesn't seem to move through the sky very much which suggests that it actually has uh, a velocity away or toward us basically it's either moving away or moving toward us and so there's the sun there is the show star and what we've discovered is that it actually is moving away from us and moving away from us at a speed of about 83 kilometers per second now that is actually very interesting because this also suggests that about 70,000 years ago and this is something that we're actually certain about this particular star actually passed through our solar system and this is of course when uh, we had our ancestors and Neanderthals walking around and possibly killing mammoths and learning how to make tools. Now back then this star that you see in the distance right there passed through our solar system at a relatively far uh, um, distance. Basically it wasn't really that close. As a matter of fact it was something about 50,000 astronomical units away or about 0.5 light years away. Which is actually a lot farther than what we were just experimenting with. Now let's try this again. We're going to actually launch um, this star again and um, we're going to create a new system here. And this time we're going to launch Scholz star at a distance where we think it passed through at a, uh, pretty much the same velocity. So this is going to be really far away. So here's a distance of about 600 astronomical units. We're going to be going at a distance of about 50,000, which is basically somewhere right about here. Now that is far away. So let's try this again and see if anything happens. Oh, and we're also going to make the speed here about 83 kilometers per second. So it's going to be moving really, really fast. But just to make this a little bit more fair, let's actually add some of these uh, Iglis, um planets at a slightly farther distance of about 100 astronomical units, which is actually not very realistic, but just to give this star a chance. Let's see if we can actually capture any of them. So I'm going to accelerate this dramatically and let's watch as this particular star passes through our solar system. And I, I'm kind of curious if any of the orbits here will change at all, actually. Now I'm running this at about 60 years per second, 64 years per second, and you can kind of see it slowly approaching our sun. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because I just want you guys to see two things. One is that, well, first of all, stars have passed to our solar system, but usually at a very, very, very far um, away distance. And um, anything closer is usually very, very rare. It's actually almost impossible for a star to pass even closer and you may actually have noticed that uh, an orbit of this glee is actually changed but it's not because of our sun it's actually because it passed a little bit too close to this other glee which affected its orbit but let's see if anything actually does happen uh, and so yeah stars that did pass through our solar system usually did this at a very far distance within what we know as the Oort cloud this is actually uh, this region around our sun at a distance of about um, 0.2 to about one light year away so basically this sphere right here where there's like billions and billions of different comets and so when these stars pass through this particular region they often affect these comets and some of them may actually change their orbit and come into the inner solar system and possibly even smack into some of the planets and this was actually the theory behind the so-called nemesis this is this is a theory or i guess a hypothesis uh, that stated that um, there might have been actually a brown dwarf called Nemesis orbiting around our sun. And I've made a video about this previously. You can check it out right here. 
and basically this nemesis was supposed to orbit around our sun every 26 million years and once in a while would send these comets into the inner system. But uh, further studies show that actually there is no um, indication of any kind of increase in um, impacts on Mars, Moon or Earth every 26 million years, which also kind of discredited this theory or this hypothesis, showing that possibly there's actually nothing to worry about and there's actually no uh, brown dwarf at all because we actually haven't detected it either but uh, we do know that this star did pass through uh, our system about 70,000 years ago at a distance of 50,000 um, astronomical units and and we've actually already did that we've actually did pass through the system and as you can kind of see none of the orbits changed at all now let's go back to our own solar system and see if anything there was affected and I have a, a feeling that nothing really changed here as well as you can see everything stayed the same way including Sedna which is orbiting the way it always was but we know for a fact that Shoal Star which I totally forgot to rename but I just did um, did pass through our solar system at a velocity of about 83 kilometers per second it uh, flew past at a distance of about 50,000 astronomical units and this may have happened many times now the important thing is is the speed here so most of the stars will not unfortunately move at a speed of three kilometers per second that we, we simulated earlier. Most of them will actually buzz through our system at a very high velocity. 80 kilometers per second would be quite a norm. So let's try this again and let's see if we're gonna capture absolutely anything if a star realistically passes through, let's just say even right here in the middle of our solar system, uh, moving that fast. If we can capture at least one planet, I will be very, very surprised. Chances are we will not. So I'm gonna launch um, Alpha Centauri, and we're gonna name this Shoal Star, just so we can actually simulate this again and see if any of these planets do get captured. And so this is a, yet another attempt of trying to recreate the potential capture of Planet 9 from the outside source, which I think may have not actually happened that way. But let's see if, if anything happens. So we're basically passing through our inner solar system. Um, we have, I don't know, like there's like nine different planets orbiting around uh, the Shoal Star. All of them um, are relatively same mass as what we think Planet 9 might be. So all of these Gliese 876D show you, um, or I guess represent Planet 9. Now we are moving at a speed of 83 kilometers per second. And as you can imagine, this is going to be a very quick passage. So let's actually wait and see what happens, if anything at all. I'm also going to zoom in on one of these planets and watch its semi-major axis and also its eccentricity. And so we're basically zooming through our solar system. And this is very likely the speed that most of the stars would actually pass through our system. They will not be moving at three kilometers per second at all. That would be quite, quite unusual. And also they wouldn't be passing that close either, but you never know. And so look at the eccentricity. It actually is increasing and, and nothing. All of them stayed within the system. I was actually hoping that at least one of them would actually get separated, but even if they do get separated, because they're moving at such a high velocity, they would just basically zoom in and then zoom out of the system. They would not be sticking around. If you look at the velocity of Neptune right here, for uh, on basically this is the velocity that you would need to stay in, our, in, in this particular region of our solar system, the velocity that Neptune has is about four kilometers per second. And so this is basically the speed that you would expect for um, for anything to have in this region. And the speed actually does decrease um, as you go farther away from the sun with other dwarf planets having a velocity that's even lower than four. So here's Aries with three kilometers per second and 2007 70R10 with about two kilometers per second and so on. The main idea here is this. Stars did pass through our system many times but they probably did so at a very high velocity. And if they did pass through our system at a high velocity and they've lost at least one of their planets, their planets would still be moving at that velocity and they would not probably be captured by our sun at all. They would actually probably still fly out of the system and escape just like they did so many times when I did my previous simulation. 
And so the only way that the star could actually possibly lose a planet, two things would have to happen. One of those things is it would have to be moving really slow, slower than about 5 kilometers per second, possibly 3 kilometers per second relative to our sun. And that's actually almost impossible. And the other thing is that it would have to pass through this region right here of about, I don't know, 30 to possibly 60 to maybe maximum 65 or maybe maximum 100 astronomical units from our sun and move even slower than that. So this is really the only way that I was able to kind of simulate the capture of a, um, of a planet. But we know that if there is Planet 9, it is actually located much farther away. It is located at a distance of about 600-ish astronomical units, which I tried before, and even if we move really slowly, it doesn't seem to capture anything. So there you have it. So having tested this several times, I'm kind of convinced now that it is very, very unlikely that Planet 9 came from the outside, from, from a solar system that passed through our system. And it's very likely that if Planet 9 does exist, and here you can kind of see it orbiting a, a distance of 500 astronomical units with 0.6 eccentricity. So if it does exist, it probably or very likely was formed in our solar system and somehow got kicked out to the outside. Now, I might be wrong. There might be uh, something I'm not really thinking about and something I'm not considering. And if you do find my mistake and if you've actually discovered a way to capture this huge massive planet um, by having a star fly through our system and have it move in exactly the same sort of way, please let me know in the comments below because I'm going to try to recreate this as well. Other than that, I think I've tried this enough. I've tried this over 50 times now and was unable to capture Planet 9 from an outside solar system. Hopefully you enjoyed this experiment and hopefully now you'll learn something else about Planet 9. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to share this and don't forget to like this video as well. And do write me on Facebook. I love answering your messages. Uh, join the Facebook group, What The Math group that is in the description below. And also, if you have anything awesome to say or you want to ask a question, this is probably the best way to contact me. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I love you so much. I'll see you in the next video. Game you later. And as always, bye-bye.